The following BLTV program is brought to you by O'Flaherty Law. Please enjoy. Welcome to Learn About Law. My name is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law. I hope you find this video and podcast helpful. If you need some help, please feel free to call us at 515-207-2006. We offer free consultations in many areas of law, and we have several geographic locations for your convenience. We serve all of Iowa. We're also happy to meet with you and provide most legal services virtually without requiring you to leave your home. Enjoy the video. Hello, I'm Gene Nassif, an attorney at O'Flaherty Law. My practice areas include business transactional matters as well as uh, some landlord, tenant, and family law issues. Now, today we're going to talk about Iowa child support jurisdiction and enforcement when parties move to different states. When an order of child support is entered, the state where the order was entered will have continued exclusive jurisdiction over the order. Only that state may enforce or modify the order. Therefore, the obligations do not generally change unless all parties have left the state and the modification of the order has been made. Furthermore, if one party has left the state, a number of tools are available to enforce the child support order. What if one party leaves the state with jurisdiction over the order? Under the Uniform Interstate Family Support Act, also known as UIFSA, if at least one parent still lives in the state that entered the first child support order, that state where the child support order was entered has continuing exclusive jurisdiction over the case. This means that the state is the only state that can change the order. If either the custodial or non-custodial parent wants to change the child support order, they must apply for modification through the court in the same way that they entered the first child support order. What happens if all parties leave the original state? If both parties have moved out of state, which uh, issued the initial child support order, the same rules would be used to determine whether, uh, whether the new court has jurisdiction for the modification of the order uh, that were used when the original child support order was issued. In other words, it'll essentially start from square one to establish jurisdiction. In short, under UFSA, a state can get or keep personal jurisdiction over a non-custodial parent if, one, the non-custodial parent is personally served, given a copy of the documents, with a summons and notice uh, within that state. Two, the custodial parent voluntarily agrees to have the court of a particular state hear the matter. Three, the non-custodial parent fails to contest or object to the jurisdiction. Four, the parent lived with the child in the particular state at any point in the past. Five, the non-custodial parent lived in the state before the child's birth and provided pre- natal expenses or support for the child. Six, the child lives in a state as a result of the acts or directives of the non-custodial parent. Or finally, the non-custodial parent engaged in sexual intercourse in the state and the child may have been conceived by that act of intercourse. How is my child's support enforced if one party moves to another state? If a party uh, who's supposed to be paying support happens to move or live in another state, uh, other than the state where the child support order was established, you still have the ability to enforce your child support order. The Office of Child Support Enforcement, or the Department of Revenue, can seek to have the parent's child support or order obligation withheld from the parent or party's paycheck. Additionally, these federal agencies can place a lien on the property that the parents own in the state that has jurisdiction over the child support order, or they can enter a foreign order to seek enforcement from states where the parent lives, works, or owns property. These are all methods to enforce and collect on the child support order. If a foreign order is made, the foreign state can use its own enforcement measures and legal authority to collect child support. This includes, but isn't limited to, placing liens on property, uh, which include bank accounts, property, and vehicles. Finally, what if I can't find the party or parent? If a party who is obligated to pay child support has moved and you don't know where they live, 
Child Support Enforcement Agency can be asked and utilized to uh, track down the party. These agencies have access to large databases and tools not available to the general public, which are often effective in helping track down the obligated party. Providing these agencies with information, such as license plate numbers, social security numbers, prior employers, and last known addresses, can be helpful to get them to uh, successfully be able to track down the obligee. As always, if you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to our firm. Hello again, this is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law. I hope you enjoyed this video and podcast. If you did, we'd love it if you'd subscribe to our channel. If you need legal help in this or any other area of law, please do not hesitate to reach out and schedule a consultation. Most consultations are free and all can be conducted remotely if you'd like. Please email us, book online, or call us at 515-207-2006. We have many locations for your convenience. We serve all of Iowa. Thank you again for watching.